The previous module described the process to develop a benchmark finite element modeling technique and uh, validated fiber-based models to analyze composite play shear wall systems under file loading. An analytical parametric uh, study was conducted to study the influence of different parameters on the fire resistance of uh, composite play shear walls. This module involves the considered parameters in the parametric study and the results of thermal finite element analysis and the temperature profile uh, zero the wall thickness and also uh, the obtained results from a stress analysis using both wall uh, section and unit width wall modeling techniques and finally uh, the proposed equations to estimate the capacity at elevated uh, temperatures and the uh, fire resistance rating of the walls uh, will be presented. The parameters considered in this parametric study were the wall slenderness ratio or uh, story height to wall thickness ratio, uh, wall thickness, uh, applied axial loading ratio, tie bar spacing to the wall thickness ratio, steel plate reinforcement ratio, uh, concrete strength, uh, boundary conditions, and the uh, heating uniformity. The range of the parameters uh, was selected based on the range of the typical parameters in the design documents or, or the literature and uh, the current uh, industry design practice. The analytical parametric study showed that the fire resistance rating of composite play shear wall decreases with an increase in the wall slenderness and the load ratio. Since concrete has a low thermal conductivity, therefore the temperature in the middle region of the concrete core increases at a lower rate in thicker walls. So the cooler part of the concrete core helps to maintain the axial capacity of the composite play shear walls during a fire event. Also based on the numerical studies results, uh, it's recommended to limit the uh, steel play slenderness ratio. And it also it was observed that the walls with the uh, wall slenderness ratios greater than 20 uh, they had a low uh, fire resistance rating due to asymmetric heating, uh, even um, at the low applied uh, loading ratios. Changing the face plate thickness caused a slight difference in the wall surface temperatures. For the current parametric study, the face plate thickness was changed to have a similar steel plate reinforcement ratio within the cross-section of composite play shear walls. The surface temperatures of the walls with various wall thicknesses are compared in this figure. The surface temperature of the walls with thicker face plate were uh, slightly uh, lower than the surface temperature of the thinner uh, face plates. The surface temperatures diverged slightly at the early steps of heating and the difference between uh, the 200 and 600 thick walls reached to about uh, 170 degrees Celsius at 30 minute, 35 minutes and then as the rate of the temperature rise decreased in the standard fire curve the surface temperatures uh, converged after about uh, 80 minutes of heating. Also the uh, temperature profile zero the uh, wall uh, thickness with the thickness of uh, 200 uh, to 600 millimeter at different time steps are shown here. Walls experience nonlinear thermal gradient uh, zero the wall uh, thickness and the uh, 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 high temperature distribution was, a, uh, was symmetric zero the wall uh, thickness. Due to low thermal conductivity of concrete, the temperature in mid thickness of the walls uh, was lower. Uh, 
uh, for example after four hours of heating the temperature at mid thickness of uh, the wall uh, with uh, 200 millimeter thickness had reached uh, to about 548 degrees celsius while the temperature in middle of the three, uh, 600 millimeter thick wall was about 43 degrees celsius after four hours of heating and uh, uh, this is uh, where uh, the surface temperatures of the walls uh, were almost the uh, same in different time steps the obtained node temperatures were transferred to finite element stress analysis as an input. The material properties of the elements were defined based on the temperature of the elements. Uh, the axial displacements of the walls were recorded and the load bearing failure criteria based on ISO 834 standard uh, was investigated where the, the wall was considered failed as uh, the axial shortening, shortening of the uh, wall exceeded the one, one, uh, one hundredths of the uh, wall height in millimeter. The uh, axial displacements of the walls follow the consistent trend. At early steps of uh, analysis, walls uh, experience thermal expansion. Uh, the amount of the thermal expansion uh, is dependent on the height of the walls such that the shorter uh, walls expanded uh, less than the taller walls. Uh, when the thermal uh, wall expansion reached to its maximum, the axial shortening due to the degradation of the material properties at elevated temperatures uh, overcame the wall uh, thermal expansion. Uh, due to uh, the reduction of stiffness in steel and uh, at elevated temperatures, local buckling occurred in the faceplate. Uh, the faceplate lost its load bearing capacity due to the, the reduction of the material strength and uh, stiffness and the bulging in the faceplate. Uh, the, the drop in the axial displacements of the wall followed by a gradual shortening in the wall. At this stage, uh, the axial displacements of the wall uh, walls decreased gradually as the temperatures increased within the wall cross section. Uh, the gradual shortening uh, of the wall continued, uh, and then, uh, due to the significant reduction in stiffness of the material and axial displacements of the uh, and the axial displacement of the walls reduced rapidly. Uh, eventually, the uh, significant uh, axial shortening occurred abruptly and the uh, uh, failure in the wall happened. The parameters uh, are found to have a major influence on the fire resistance of the composite uh, play shear walls uh, are discussed here and in the, uh, ne uh, the next slide. Uh, the failure uh, time and the surface temperature at failure for some of the models with the varying, uh, varying uh, main parameters are presented here. Uh, the response of the walls with a pin, uh, pinned uh, and a fixed pin and a, fi a fixed fixed boundary conditions uh, was studied. The axial displacements of the wall with the, the 300 millimeter thickness and the cylinderness of 20 uh, with three uh, different boundary conditions against the time are compared in this figure. Uh, the axial displacements of the wall at the uh, early stage of the analysis were closed uh, uh, like, and uh, the curves uh, diverged due to the uh, initiation of the global instability in the walls at later stages of the heating. Comparing the response of the walls uh, with fixed uh, fixed boundary condition uh, with the response of the walls with a pin pin or fixed pin boundary condition shows that the providing a fixed fixed boundary condition improves the fire resistant rating of the walls and the walls with the pin pin boundary condition uh, failed earlier compared to the walls with other boundary condition types. For example, a 300 mm thick wall with a cylinderness of 20 failed at uh, after 140 minutes of heating 
with pinned in binary condition while the same while of same uh, wall failed at about uh, 172 minute, uh, minutes with a fixed fixed binary condition uh, the furthest extent of the composite play shear walls was studied with various wall slenderness ratios. Uh, the, walls, uh, the wall slenderness uh, ranged from uh, 5 to 10. Uh, the axial displacements against time for uh, four walls with a thickness of 300 mm and the wall slenderness range of uh, 5 to 20 are shown in this figure. Uh, the temperature expansion uh, was uh, uh, larger along the height of the walls in slender walls. The comparison of the displacement shows that the increase in the wall slenderness uh, results in the reduction of the wall fire rating. Uh, the, uh, fire, uh, the failure time of the uh, wall uh, with slenderness of 20 had reduced uh, by about 50% uh, compared uh, with the wall with slenderness of 5. Uh, and also uh, shorter walls failed uh, under uh, yielding or crushing uh, while the slender, the slender walls were buckled globally under fire loading. Uh, the results indicated that in increasing the wall slenderness uh, can have a detrimental effect on the fire resistance rating of the walls. Comparing the fire resistance rating of walls with various thicknesses showed that increasing the wall thickness improves the fire resistance of other walls. As mentioned before, in comparing the temperature profile zero, the wall thickness, due to low thermal conductivity of concrete, the temperature in middle regions uh, of the wall was uh, lower uh, in thicker walls. So uh, the cooler region in thick walls helps to maintain the axial capacity of the walls under fire loading. For example, the fire resistance of walls with the slenderness of 10 uh, had reduced by uh, 31 minutes when the uh, wall thickness decreased uh, from uh, 300 to 200 mm. The response of the walls was analyzed uh, with an axial loading equal to 20 and 30% of the axial concrete infill compressive capacity at ambient temperature. Uh, this figure uh, shows uh, uh, that uh, the comparison of the axial displacements of the walls under uh, 20 and 30 percent axial uh, load. Uh, for example, the wall with uh, 30 percent loading failed about 100 minutes earlier than the wall under uh, 20 percent applied loading. In the next step of this study, composite play shear walls were modeled using unit width wall modeling technique uh, using uh, both fiber and finite element models. Also, the obtained results from both models were compared to validate the performance of the fiber uh, tools uh, for composite play shear walls under file loading. A general agreement in the pr uh, predicted uh, axial displacement by uh, finite element analysis and uh, the fiber tool was observed. The comparison of the results uh, for uh, validation of the fiber tool and, uh, and also the details uh, uh, on the concept of the unit width wall modeling technique were discussed in uh, module 2. Also, more comparison uh, for validation of the fiber tool are provided in the report. As shown uh, in the picture on the right, uh, in this modeling technique, the wall uh, cross-section was divided uh, down into units along the wall width, and a single unit uh, of wall was uh, modeled. The unit width uh, wall uh, had a width equal to the tie bar spacing with the uh, with tie bars at the middle of the cross section. Heat uh, is assumed to f uh, flow only uh, perpendicular to the uh, wall, and also steel elements were modeled on two sides of the unit. 
A parametric study uh, on composite plate shear walls using uh, the unit width wall technique with varying uh, wall slenderness ratio was conduct conducted. The obtained axial displacements uh, from both models are shown in the left figure. The walls uh, with a higher uh, slenderness ratio were uh, failed earlier than the walls with smaller slenderness ratios similar uh, to the obtained results uh, modeling the whole uh, section of the walls. As the last step of the parametric study, the response of composite plate shear walls under non-uniform fire loading was studied. In this study, fire was assumed to be present only on one side of the wall. So one face of the wall was exposed to the fire loading while the temperature on other face remained at ambient temperature. The out of plane displacements of a wall heated non-uniformly uh, with the range of par uh, wall slenderness ratios from 10 to 30 are shown here. All the walls initially buckled in direction of the heated face. This is because of uh, wall bending due to non-uniform heating, which caused the heated steel faceplate to expand more than the remaining section. The walls with the wall slenderness ratios less than 20 were uh, bended towards the unexposed face after a period of heating, but the slender uh, walls bended toward the exposed face until the uh, wall failed. Walls with the slenderness uh, ratios greater than 20 fell uh, very early at uh, low surface temperatures, but short walls were stable uh, uh, longer and the surface temperature on the exposed surface exceeded 1100 degrees Celsius at failure. The figure uh, on the right presents the two types of the moments generated within the cross-section. The non-uniform uh, heating resulted in a loss of more stiffness in material close to the exposed face compared to the material near the unexposed face. Therefore, the center of the stiffness shifted towards the unexposed face. As load was applied at the geometric center of the section, a moment was generated which was opposite to the moments imposed due to the expansion of material on the heated face. So the walls uh, started to bend towards the unexposed face when the generated moments due to the center uh, of the stiffness shift overcame the moment uh, generated due to uh, asymmetric thermal expansion of the section. So the reason of early failure of the cylinder walls under non-uniform fire loading was that in cylinder walls, the moments generated due to the asymmetric thermal expansion were enough to cause instability even at low temperatures. Also, the cylinder uh, wall sections were seen to fail quickly even for low applied axial loads. This difference in behavior of single-sided fire scenario uh, was not observed for cases with a uniform fire loading. Because in these cases, moments were generated only because of non-uniform heating of the member. So, due to early failure of cylinder walls under non-uniform heating, it is recommended to limit the wall cylinderness ratio of unprotected walls to 20. Observations from the parametric study were used to develop a method to calculate the axial compression strengths of composite plate shear walls at elevated temperatures. The obtained critical loads from the numerical analysis were normalized to the nominal section capacity of the walls. The normalized axial uh, strength loads were plotted against the ratio of nominal section capacity to uh, the elastic buckling strength as shown in, the in this figure. 
all the parameters were calculated based on the temperature of the elements at the failure time for the studied cases in the parametric study. This figure includes the data obtained from both a whole section and unit width wall modeling technique. Two equations were fitted to the data points to estimate the axial compression capacity of composite play shear walls at elevated temperatures. These equations depend on the modulus of elasticity and the yield strengths of concrete and steel elements at elevated temperatures. The lower bound equation passes below all the data points. However, the average of the data points uh, was considered in the curve fitting process for the median equation. Therefore, the axial compression strengths of the composite pleasure walls at elevated temperatures can be predicted conservatively by using the lower bound equation. Data points obtained from the fiber models uh, were also plotted with the proposed capacity equations for the composite play shear walls. Both the fiber model and the finite element model's uh, data points uh, follow the similar uh, trend and all the data points were above the proposed lower bound uh, curve. However, there are some differences uh, between the data points obtained from the fi finite element models and fiber models. These discrepancies uh, are due to the simplifying assumptions of the fiber model as discussed in the report. In addition to the capacity prediction equations, this research also developed an equation to calculate the fire resistance rating as a unit of time for composite play shear wall systems. To develop the fire resistance rating equation, the proposed lower bound strength equation was used to calculate the critical axial capacity of walls. The estimated fire resistance ratings uh, using the proposed uh, equation versus the obtained uh, fire resistance ratings from uh, the numerical models are compared in this figure. The comparison uh, shows that there is a reasonable agreement between the estimated fire ratings by the equation and the numerically obtained fire resistance ratings. Wall thickness, wall cylinderness ratio or a story height to wall thickness ratio and the load uh, uh, ratio are the input parameters. The development and the range of the parameters for this equation are discussed in the report.